Hey everyone. So Adrian, Indiana Backyard Gardener, in case you are new. If you are new, then welcome. If you are not new, then welcome back. I am just turning on the camera because I promised myself that I would not, um, what should I say? I've always been, like I don't turn the camera on because I feel like things have to be just perfect for me to film. So I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to turn the camera on more and not worry about things being just perfect. I'm trying to get out here in the sunroom because as you can see, things are a little messy and things were left undone at the end of last season. Um, I had some setbacks, some life setbacks in the fall and I kind of just left everything as is. So uh, I need to start to utilize this small greenhouse. <clears throat> I need to start breaking down some of these chewy boxes that are accumulating. And I need to get this little area in shape so that I can start some seeds soon. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got going on. Um, I also have some things that I'm going to be, um, showing you guys. So, I mean, that's about it. This is my herb drying rack. I have a link for it in the description. I got this from... Sorry, I was trying to see what Zeke was up to out there. Um, I got this from Khadija at Her Healthy Home. And I took forever to open it and use it. But I finally opened it and used it last year. I put some sage in here. Um, I think some lemon balm. And... I thought I had, um, I don't know, I thought I had something else in there, but all I see is sage and lemon balm. So, I've got sage and lemon balm dried out from last year. <clears throat> I am going to utilize these chewy boxes in the garden. Um, they make great weed suppressors and I intend to use them. So basically I'm just breaking down boxes. I'm clearing this area out. I'm going to take all these dried herbs out of here and store them. And then I'm going to get over there in that corner and get that um, greenhouse together. I've got pots over there that I don't even know what was in there. There was plants in there that I had started um, at the end of last season. And then, like I said, things happened and I kind of just left everything. So needless to say, everything died. And um, now I have to clean up the leftovers. <laughs> I also have a whole thing of dill seeds that I need to harvest. I just, what I did was I just went out there and I harvested all the dill that was dried up and <clears throat> just threw it in like a bin or like a uh, crate. And I never took the seeds off. So I'm gonna take the seeds off of them, stems, harvest those dill seeds and, and put those away. Um, so yeah, basically just to clean up, just some spring cleaning in this, in this sunroom. So I'll be back. I'll let you guys see what I got done. Um, I'm just going to work on breaking down all these boxes for right now and getting this area cleaned out so that I can make my way to the greenhouse. It's 
son's dog is out here in the sunroom and knocked over my fig plants. I hope they come back. I mean, they are dormant, so I just hope they come back. Zeke, excuse me. So, I'm going to try to put this dirt back in there. She got in my fertilizer. She had it all over the place. I had some fertilizer for some uh, azaleas and rhododendron or whatever you want to call those because I was going to get some. I never did, but that was a whole brand new bag of fertilizer, never opened. And she got into that, had it all over the place. Zeke doesn't do that kind of stuff, right Zeke? Right pup? It's a good pup? Huh? It's my good pup? Yeah, he's my good pup. You see the mess? That was from Roku. Roku made that mess. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to clean up this dirt and fertilizer. You see I cleared out all the boxes, the chewy boxes. I think there's about six of them maybe. Probably from the last six months or so. So, making progress. All right, so I've got some stuff here that is dead. This was basil. It's definitely dried up. I'm just going to use these paint bus pans, dish pans, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to put them in here so that I can put them in the compost. It is really dusty out here. I would just have like a little sneezing fit. So now my nose is running. I might even have some seed here that I might be able to save. I'm gonna cut that off. So I'm gonna cut those off. I can't tell right now if there's actually some viable seeds on there, but in the event that there is, I want to save them. This actually smells pretty good. That other one I couldn't smell at all, but this one I can smell. So yeah, I need to get something clean to put those in. These were coleus and I'm probably probably have some seed on here somewhere. I don't even know what coleus seed looks like. Oh yes. Super tiny. But I can tell that those are seeds. Much like the petunia seeds, they are super, super tiny. Yep. So, 
this has turned into something I didn't expect it to turn into. I thought I was coming out here to clean up and now I am harvesting seeds. So I need something to harvest them on. This was a, I actually have to harvest some shishito peppers too. This was a plate I had to harvest shishito peppers. I've got some of those I gotta harvest. So let me get something clean to put my basil on and to get my seeds All right. So I've got some lids here that I know I can use to harvest some seeds on. Just some random plastic lids. All right, so where was I? Coleus, right? So that's coleus. I need to mark that with this tag, right? All right, so let me snip off here to probably show you guys. see that but these are super 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 tiny seeds all right so I'm not gonna bother uh, trying to get all the shake out I mean obviously I'm not gonna put the stems in there but I'm not gonna bother with all the shake If I have another one. Oh yeah, here's a few more. There's one there. See that? There's a bunch of seeds on there. rest of this will go into the compost and then I got these neat little six pack trays too they're pretty sturdy well, I wouldn't say they're sturdy but they're still good I can still put them to use put it that way and I'm gonna chop these just a little bit up these are all going in the compost, but I want them to fit in my bin here. All right. So, these, I don't know what these were, but they are no more. Actually, I can probably use this seed starter mix yeah I can use that salvage as much of the seed starting mix as I can like this I can crush that up like 
this. And I can get some of that perlite. All the shake that comes off of there. And then I can just throw that in my compost. Here's another one. Just always want to keep reusing your resources. This is great because it's got the perlite in it, so it's good for aeration. I don't buy that stuff. I don't buy perlite. I don't buy vermiculite. I don't, I don't buy any of that stuff. So when I do get it, I use it and reuse it. So dusty, I should probably be wearing a mask. the basil sure there was a tag here for it and I'll just put the tag right on the little cap with the with the seeds that I'm gonna harvest off of there these So this was a different coleus, it was this one. The first one was this one. So now I have all of these seeds here that I can harvest. And of course you're going to reuse these, you're going to save these and reuse them. Whenever get rid of anything that you can use, sanitize it with peroxide, boiling water. We got these here for seed. And now we've got all of this that I can reuse. And then that dried basil I'm going to crush up and put in one of these Ziploc bags. So I'm not going to crush it up, I'm going to clip it off. And just put it in the bag like that. Just the very tips where the stem is super skinny. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here, this stem here is like thicker. And then when you get up to like right here, this part here is super thin. It just comes right off. You see that little stem part? So that's where I'm cutting it. All right, so the rest of this, I think I can just pick off and toss in my bag. Alright, 
So there's that. Got this pan here for seed starting. Those seeds there, some basil. And I still have to get this dill. I'm not gonna do that right now. Right now I'm gonna finish this. All right guys, so I got the greenhouse together over here. I got all these trays that I need to actually sanitize and some other seed starting things that I can use. Here's a few of these trays here. I've got this mix over here that I can use for seed starting. Um, I have these plastic domes. We had a convention at my church and these were from trays of cupcakes. Ugh, I got spider web on my finger. Um, trays of cupcakes. So I plan on using these plastic domes. The bottoms are over here. So I can put um, like these types of pots inside there, put the dome on it. And then I can put this over it. I wanted to and put them outside but um, I still have to figure out where I'm gonna put stuff outside I haven't decided decided yet I have an idea but I just haven't really made up my mind so I have one more thing for you guys and I was supposed to do this a while ago like a while ago I've had this in my possession for a long time. But then I had the seed swap going on and the weather, the weather just was not, um, it just was not cooperating. I wanted to take this and open it and take it outside. All right, guys. So what I have here is the mini chainsaw. All right, the Saker mini chainsaw. Um, I know that a lot of you probably had it, got it, uh, did your review, did your unboxing and whatnot. But I wanted to actually take mine outside and demonstrate it. So let me show you what's inside the box. So this is what it looks like when I open it up. It got some packing stuff. Seems like it's it's got some weight to it. All right. So, this is the Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw 4-inch Portable Cordless Electric Chainsaw, 20 volt max, all right, it's got it cutting a piece of log here, so I don't know, seems like they are um, claiming that it's pretty strong install the battery now that is something I was questioning on whether or not I should charge it first so that's the part I was I was questioning whether or not I should open it and then charge it and then come back so, let's see, product selling point, <laughs> rechargeable electric chainsaw, 
says it can be used for a long time. It didn't say how long. Easy to carry. Strong dynamic system. Lightweight and portable. Sorry guys, this little thing that it's sitting on is shaking. All right. So let me open this box. I'm doing this with one hand. So. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Here's a little wrench. screwdriver this is your oil I wonder what kind of oil it is because you know if you're cutting fruit trees and stuff you want it to be um, you know like a vegetable oil or something charging the battery chainsaw then there's also a booklet in there I'm assuming it's an instruction manual so let me open this instruction manual and then we'll take a look all right so I have opened up battery so this is what the battery looks like okay this is your charger um, I'm guessing it goes right in the middle there so you can't charge it. I'm assuming you can't charge it while it's on the unit. So you have to take the battery off and charge it. All right. This is your instruction manual. Save your instruction manual, always save it. It doesn't say whether or not that to charge it beforehand, usually things will tell you to fully charge it before you start to use it. This just says wear eye protection, wear ear protection, wear helmet, goggles, and ear protection. Use appropriate protection for feet, legs, arms. Do not expose to rain. Hold the saw with both hands while working. One-handed use is extremely hazardous. So, you're supposed to use it with two hands, I'm, gu I'm guessing. So let's take this off. It's light. It's got this like rubbery grip on it, which makes it feel, you know, pretty sturdy in your hand. There's like a, a trigger here for you to use. Um, the chain is already on it. You can see that the chain's already on it. Um, I'm guessing that this is like a safety. So when you're using it, you have to you have to press this button and then pull that push, you know what I mean, to be able to use it. It's the same thing with my um, weed whacker. It's got a strap here for you to put it around your arm so that I guess while you're using it, um, you know, if you were to drop it or whatever, it wouldn't fall. Um, yeah, there's a guard here. So that's cool. All right, let's see if we can put the battery on. And that was pretty easy. 
because it stand up stands up it's freestanding if you set it down it's very light it is there's a button here to release the battery when you're when you're done all right so I'm gonna just turn it on I'm gonna put push I'm gonna push this button and squeeze this So, I mean, from what I can see, it's charged. There's a note here. It says, do not cut wood, which is more than four inches. All right, so that's the max that you wanna cut is four inches. Do not overpress the machine when cutting wood. When the machine is not used for a long time, please fully charge it and then store it. All right, so I'm gonna take this outside because I have some kale plants that I wanted to cut down. Not, you know, it's not the ideal thing for a chainsaw, but those kale plants are pretty thick. So, um, and I do have a couple other things I wanted to demonstrate. So let's go check it out. You can see I got all those sunflowers there. I might just use it to saw them down, I don't know. All right, so see these kale plants are really thick hang on all right so these kale plants are really thick and I don't want to get rid of them I just want to trim them down because I know that they'll keep growing so I'm gonna put a little bit of this oil on the on the saw just a little bit Another thing you want to make note of is it's not a left-handed tool. Like I can't see. I mean, I guess I could I guess I could if I push it with my forefinger and then use my middle finger here, I could use it with my left hand. But it's not it's not easy. So I'm going to put some oil on here. few drops because I don't know what kind of oil it is all right sorry if it's loud guys and I'm gonna trim these okay not bad I'm gonna see if I can trim it like all the way. Well, that was good. Came off with with ease. Then again, this is just a plant. It's not like it's wood. So yeah, I wanted to trim this down so that it'll start to grow back again. very smooth right there but so yeah that's what I wanted to do with that and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put some compost around it see if it'll grow you see it's green so it's still alive I just wanted to get that big part out of the way and then I got another one on the other side you should probably be wearing eye protection but I just opened it to him outside, so. Kind of bulky. Not gonna get into hard to reach places. So the squirrels like to 
plant little acorns and grow little mini trees around here. So this one here, this is one that's been growing right here. And I just cut it down and cut it down and cut it down. So we're gonna see how well this does here. this one here too but it's so hard because it's right up against a fence this one here no this one's not I don't even need to do that one so around the property I have a lot of those types of um, little trees that grow up because the squirrels plant those little acorns everywhere so this this will come in handy to chop those down at the base um because i'm just not strong enough i just don't have the muscle to use like a big pruner for that so i'm gonna go out in the front and see i think i have a couple so overall I mean, I guess it's an okay tool. I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure that I would seek it out. I'm glad that I was able to try it first. Oh, it looks like my husband might have got all of these already. Yeah, he already got these down. Anyhow, I don't think that it would be a tool that I would seek out. But it's definitely um, a handy tool. It's very lightweight, but it's not, the control on it for me anyway, is not the best. Like it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cut with ease like it could. You know, it's, not, it's just not really that sharp. The, the, um, I'm guessing the blade on it is what I'm trying to say is not like super sharp, but I will definitely be using it. I will definitely be using it. To me, it's like another, like a handheld pruner. I don't see it as a chainsaw really, as I see it as like a pruner, but I will be testing it out on some pallets. Overall, I mean, I like it. It's a cool tool. It just doesn't seem like it's very heavy duty. It's very lightweight. It's not gonna handle heavy duty um, jobs. So um, yeah, the mini Saker mini electric chainsaw is to me just a handheld pruner. Um, but then again, like I said, I haven't tested it on the wood yet, and I will do that um, when it starts to get nicer out. Actually, let's go outside right now because I have a pallet right there. Let me, give me a second. All right, so we're going to test this out on this pallet I have. All right. Right out here, I have this pallet. All right. It says not to cut more than four inches of wood. So this is not, I don't think this is four inches. I actually would want to cut that middle part. And it's probably exactly four inches because it's probably a two by four. All 
I'm going to try to cut it right here and we're going to see how well it does. Let's get you guys a little closer. All right. So we're going to try to cut it like right here. Actually, I actually like it. I actually think it did a really good job. It's not too choppy. I mean, it is kind of chewed up right there. See how it's like chewed up right there? But overall, I think it did a really good job right there. Like the cut is it's pretty clean so yeah I think this actually might do the trick for me this summer when I go to use these pallets to make some garden beds so yeah I'm gonna definitely be using these on the pallets. It does say not more than four inches so I wouldn't do anything bigger than that but I think it'll do the trick for what I need it for so I'm pretty happy with the product, pretty happy with the outcome, and it's gonna, it's definitely gonna do what I need it to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it, um, and I hope you like and subscribe. If you're new, then welcome, and I hope you like it enough to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Um, I love comments. And yeah, until next time, the more you know, the more you grow. Bye, guys.